So who lied? Who lied? In the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delights, who lied? Some believe, and some are circulating an ancient, I say heresy, just, 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 just bad teaching, bad doctrine. Idiotes, idiotes, they're looking at their own way. They're saying that Elohim, Hailehim, some would say Allahayim, the God, quote unquote, according to Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, well, actually chapter 2. People go into chapter 3, but they don't check chapter 2. Now, we had caught a little bit of what Sarnetta and um, sister named Nepal Shada were reasoning on. And as we mentioned in the previous video that we are, we're familiar we're familiar with this particular doctrine. Some might term it as a so-called Gnostic doctrine. More correctly, some of the secular, the coin of Greek, the Greek, the non-Hebrew, so-called Gnostics come from a secular kind of a Greek, a Greco from the other nations, the other nations philosophy, philosoph philosophizing, philosophizing, there we go, philosophizing on what the scripture actually says. But, but who lied? The serpent lied. Who lied? In the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden incident, Eve, Hawa, we can say our first mother, she lied. Now we're going to seek to further teach on this. We already taught on it in the previous video that we sought to address. I think we put her name at the, at the head, um, Nepal Shada. Some of our people might not know who she is, but on the side, Neda and the and the House of Conscience, his particular platform, ones and ones know. She's a sister that comes forward with certain questions and dialogue and reasoning concerning the Bible and black people. And, you know, overall, you know, we're not going to dis, you know, you know, dis, um, dishonor her as some of the other so-called Hebrews and Israelites have. Because they can't only go but so deep because they have the English only. As Sizzler Kalunji, Brother Sizzler, you know, Kalunji, a.k.a. Miguel Collins, I-9 Rastafari, brother. You know, Judgment Yard. You know, as he has said in an audio that we share on the podcast, the Rastafari podcast and the sabbatical podcast, where he says English, English would, English is ruining, is ruining black peoples, the once lost, now found black and brown peoples, the Beit, Beit Israel's mentality, this English-only philosophy is ruining black people's mentality. You know, because some are bibliolators. They'll, they'll say, the King James Bible is a good stepping stone. Let's put it like that. It's a good stepping stone. We can get into was King James a Hebrew, was he black, an Israelite, so forth and so on. And some of you already know, you know how we stand on that based on the evidence, so forth and so on. There's a lot to that right there, right? But in looking at now the text that ones and ones want to, like Sanetta was speaking to Captain to Zariak and hail up to um, Captain Azania of the ISUPK. We used to be on a, a Saturday evening a radio show, Brother Lawrence Davis, what you know about God and his chosen people. And we went through about maybe two or so years, a little over two years. We had like 20, uh, such a, almost 30 episodes. Very, very interesting. It was very, I give thanks for fellowshipping with um, the ISUPK's Captain Azania in the reasoning and the discussions, you know, no, we haven't always agreed on everything, but the fundamental, the groundation, the foundation principles we have agreed on. But let's touch on this. Who lied in the Ganba Aiden? Because we heard Sarnetta, you know, get into this with Captain Azania again, and he still holds to, you know, his reading. And it's good that one to talk about the Blue Letter Bible. LOJ Society, the line of Jews Society, Likul Batalawa, small, but having a great impact. Ones are now getting into the interlinear Bible studies, right? And the Blue Letter Bible, for example. You can check out some of the old, old videos. We were the, one of the first to really confront some of the Hebrews, Israelites, different camps on some of what they was teaching from the English only or the English mainly perspective and really confusing they were almost regurgitating the same so-called white man's Christianity philosophy while fighting against the so-called white man's Christianity philosophy. So where, 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 where should we continue on this? Okay, let's prove the first point. Some say the Elohim lied, and also another point that we heard Sarnetta. It's a, it's a recent, it's a recent um, interview with uh, Captain Tazariak on the couch. 
um, over at Sarnetta, Sarnetta Studios being interviewed, asked various different questions. And it was very, very, very good, very insightful. Heal up, Shalawam, Shalom, Captain Tazariak. Um, but then we heard, you know, Sarnetta, he'll come in and give his, like, you know, his, um, his, his, his commentaries, right? He would give his um, particular commentaries on, you know, certain things. Um, and, um, yeah, so he's saying that, well, based on what Captain Cesariac said concerning the Elohim, or as they would pronounce it, Allahayim, we would say Hailehim, to bring out the sense of power. As we mentioned in the, as we mentioned in the previous vid that we have on Rastafari, um, Jews, and also to... We're going to get into more on the Patreon. So please check out LOJS.org. LOJS.org. All right, check out the platform right there. Also, the um, Rastafari podcast, Monday to uh, Saturday to early Sunday morning, right? We have um, the Rastafari podcast that's on the blog talk radio forward slash. L O J Society, right? L O J Society. All the links can be found at L O J S dot O R G. The call in number from 10 to, to, to midnight, we have an extra hour. So it's about three hours almost every night. We grind for like three hours every night. Call in number 515 602 9761. That's 515 602 9761. Now, some ones and ones have like uh, T Mobile, Metro PCS, and some of these other services. And what some of the phone companies are doing is they are, you know, acquiring, buying up other companies and they're adding this kind of one cents per minute to call into chat lines, call conference lines and chat lines. So they're charging this one cents a minute. So some of the ones and ones who have called in regularly, you know, we don't want to put them under no financial, you know, duress, especially it's not giving, it's not being given to the ministry. We're not getting any of that one cent. It's basically going to the, you know, T-Mobile and some of the affiliate companies, so forth and so on. So that being said, we also have the replays as well. One can check out the replays. Now, ones can link I and I, link I and I a little more directly. Um, send a send a send a text. You know, send a text. This is a text mainly, not so much text only, but a text mainly. Can send a text mainly to us. Um, what's the number again? The one six six four six six four six four nine four twenty three eighty eight six four six. 494-2388 and if we don't don't have it in the description here we'll seek to put it in the description so ones can forward us a text there's some whatsapp some other groups you can like send out like a text blast and ones and ones can know you know what's going on and also brothers and sisters hit the notification and also share the link you know on whatever platform you're hearing this particular vlog in its entirety share a link right share the video share the link as well right because after the hit that we took on some of the other channels seeking to at least build up the communication you know here and there while these supplies last so first point first point first point first point right first point first point first point right is um yeah it's about the elohim so there's like three points one point is okay sarnetta as many ones and ones it's not about sarnetta and we're not coming out so much against him or whatever else. We, we understand what he does and how he does what he does. And it's been very good, actually. Some of the same questions, some have asked us whether he's been checking out our videos. And, you know, some of our videos don't get a lot of circulation as some of their videos so forth and so on. You know, at least hasn't. Hopefully that will change, you know, very soon, soon, soon. But that's all on you, the listeners, the viewers, and the brothers and sisters who, who share. And I give thanks for those who have, you know, tried it with us and have benefited from the teaching of His Majesty in our ministry. Give thanks and may Father Elohim Ha'ab, B'Shem Yeshua, be pleased with our labor of love. But there's a couple of, um, there's a couple of, um, errors that that be made right errors that be made we touched on the elohim or alahayim the word in the hebrew enunciated by us as elohim others will say alahayim sometimes you hear say chaylehim chayl chayl ha'el ayyele 
coming from that ancient root word to, for power or to like overpower, right? To power, overpower. So the sense of power, right? And then the word is a plural, but if you study and read the Hebrew, and you have to go beyond the blue letter, the blue letter Bible is good because we were advocates for the blue letter Bible for, for a while now, right? For a while now, we've been speaking about the blue letter Bible, right? And so it's good that ones and ones, you know, many ones and ones are checking out the blue letter Bible. So some of the recent, you know, the recent stills right here that we have, we touched on Elohim in Bereshit, right? Elohim, here pointing Elohim. Now we're able to check out pointings too because of some of the old archaic Ethiopic documents, right? Because there were old Hebrew documents that the Israelites of Ethiopia who established that Solomonic, um, Davidic Solomonic kingdom from the time of the Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba, King Solomon, and their only son. Now, some of the other Hebrews, Israelites may not accept that. They may say, well, it's not in the Bible, so forth and so on. But it is in the Bible. And when we get into the Hebrew, we can prove that as well. But here, they say that the Elohim, Elohim, was lying. We say that the serpent, the serpent was lying. The serpent was the liar, and then we add to that, I want to say add to that, it's not adding to the word, but adding to one's understanding, understanding, overstanding of the word, based on the word, based on the scripture, what's in the Bible, even what's in the translation. Let's go right here, and let's get our Schofield Study Bible, the Talmudim, the Dek Amazamorit, right, the Talmudim, that's the word, yeah, Talmud, Talmud, Talmudim, the, the disciple, that's the Hebrew word for disciples. So we have to get a lot of this foolishness, you know, in the English only. A lot of things come down to us and are not always right and accurate. So the study of the Hebrew is very important to us, right? To the Rastafari, the Rastafari Chabarim, right? To disciples. And this is what we have been grinding on for at least the past decade or so in the podcast, the audios, um, the, the vi videos, the vlogs. You know, in order for us to know the truth for ourselves, right? So we go through the, the weekly, the, the, the weekly Torah portions, the reading and feedings, you know, and here, 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 you know, we're at Ikeb, Ikeb, here in this particular season here, the 46th sabbatical study for this Shabbat Strong. But once again, let's go to the beginning, because how can ones know, well, what is going to be in the end? if ones don't have a good groundation, a good understanding on the beginning. So in hearing the reasonment of Sarneta on Sarneta's platform and Nepal Shaddai concerning, you know, the Garden of Eden and what occurred and their reading, their reading, and I will say this, and I say this, you know, to brothers and sisters who I have no ill will to, but you are, you are misled, you are deceived, and you're trying to, it seems as though you're trying to push your own particular agenda about this and not doing due diligence to study the Hebrew. When we heard Sarnetta mention about the Blue Letter Bible, go to the Blue Letter Bible, <laughs> even a few ones was like saying to us like, wait, you've been talking about this for, for, for more than a decade. Yes, we have, but it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. You know, the Almighty knows who has done what, whether ones, you know, if we get... If we get like credit from men and people, we might lose our credit with Shemaim, you know, with, you know, in the heavens, you know, so, so, so let that be so. But if ones have heard that and have found the benefit of the interlinear Bibles, the Blue Letter Bible, and see the Blue Letter Bible, what it does is basically goes into word by word, right? Word by word. But what you have to do now is now that you're getting into individually wrapped Hebrew words, what ones need to do is to get into right, the Hebrew text, right, the Hebrew text itself. Right? So what we're gonna do right here, let's let's see if we can find our um um there we go right there, there we go right there. Okay, now the video, if you haven't seen the previous video, right? Okay, so here we're gonna put in let's put in Eden. Let's put in Eden right there, right? Eden Right. Okay. Okay. We got to take it off the Aleppo. The Aleppo is unpointed Hebrew right there. So we go to the KJV right there. So here we go right here. We're at Bereshith. Bereshith. Not Bereshit. Bereshith. Right. Bereshith. Right. Um, 
chapter Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 and Yahweh Yahweh Elohim some say Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Aden and there he put the man whom he had formed now I pause here on who he had formed because uh, how do you see this how do you hear this I mean reading it from the English there's a lot of possibilities of what this might mean and I've heard different preachers pastors others into the Bible you know go into form what form means but then what does the Hebrew mean and not just looking at the individual word right but also how the word is used throughout the other areas of the Hebrew scripture right comparing scripture with scripture line upon line precept upon precept here a little and there a little right so here we have Aden we have Eden so here we have and Yahuwah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden now it's called the garden of Eden but here the scripture says a garden right a gan in the Hebrew the word is gan in the Amharic is genet but the gan a gan eastward in Aden so where was Aden see see where was Eden See, Eden was a place, right? Obviously, it was a place according to what the narrative of the scripture is saying. And then eastward in that place did Yahuwah, he who be who he be, the power. Now, when one say that Elohim is plural, for Yisrael, Elohim is a singular, is in a singularity. How do we know this? Because almost everywhere, the majority, over 90% of the places, it's used to refer to Hakadosh, the Holy One, Baruch Hu, blessed be He. Speaking of Yod Hey Wah Hey Yahweh Yahweh Yahweh, it is always the verb is always singular. We touched on this in the Bereshith video. Let's see if we can just show that to ones and ones. If ones and ones are watching this, maybe they can check out. Let's see right here. Where 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 where's the video? Okay, let's let's go over here. Oh oh, oh we just passed it right there. We just passed it right there at the studio, right? The studio. Let's see if if this comes up. Okay, and okay, we're not okay. We're not logged in there, so we can't go back to that right now. You know, but you can check it out on this channel. You can see the previous videos. One was um, um, the divine feminine in the beginning, bringing out hakma, 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 right? Wisdom in the beginning, right? Wisdom. And we have other areas of the scripture, Proverbs. It was very good to hear, so I'm not even pointing to certain areas of the scripture, getting into those verses regarding very vital things. So, yes, we would say that the Most High, right, is, is working with him or is, you know, using him as a means, right, to really get this, some subject matters, us who claim to be of what we claim to be, to really grind and get to the bedrock of what we are speaking about according to the scriptures not according to our own ideas right because we're not giving our own ideas about this right our own ideas about this will be maybe a little bit different much different than what is what is written here what i mean by that is you know it, it's crazy what happened in, in the beginning it, it's really wild but then as you begin to study it, you begin to see wow ain't nothing new under the sun right so with one saying like right here in the verse that we brought up right here right and see some of this might not be so easily understood when it says he had formed notice it's saying that yahuwah he who be who he be the y-h-w-h means he who be he he who is he who be who he be who is who he is he is who he is the power the power yes the word is plural but the verb is singular the verb is not Yahuwah Elohim, they planted a garden, but Yahuwah Elohim, he, he planted a garden, eastward in Eden, and there he put, all right, so in the Hebrew, we can have a verb, the verb can be singular, it can be singular masculine, singular feminine, it can be plural masculine or plural feminine, this is how the Hebrew goes, but a lot of this gets lost in translation. So when um, Saneda had asked Tazariak concerning Elohim, who is Elohim, 
he, he said well, it's, 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 it's like God the Father, it's the Father and, and the Son, right? And then that made um, Sarnetta respond like, well, 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 that means there's more than one person in that sense. But even the idea of persons, when you talk about the person, right, or the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we have to understand in the Hebrew what does this idea of person is not the same as I'm a person, you're a person, right? It has to do with interface, interface. I, I, I'll get into that a little bit later on, but interface, right? It's really face and interface, right? It's like with my brethren, I'm, I'm, I'm a brethren. With my wife, I'm, I'm a husband, right? With my children or with children, you know, I'll be a father on that particular level. You, you know what I'm saying? So, am I brother? Yes, I'm brother. But in this, in this relationship, I am, I am, I am father. In, in this relationship, I am son. In another relationship, I may be son. So I may be son over here in this relationship with my parents, but father in the relationship with my children. So brother in relationship with my brethren or or sistren. Right and 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 husband in my relationship with my wife, but I'm the same one. I am the same Shema Yisrael Yahweh Loheinu Yahweh Achad. Hear O Israel, He who be who He be, the power. He who be who He be, the one. So just to clear that up, or at least to speak to that. Now, of course, there's the scene where it says, "Well, the man has become like one of us." Some believe that it was. Hailehem, it was the Elohim speaking to the angels. I submit to you that it was the Elohim speaking to the Word, the Son, who is the Word, and speaking to wisdom, who was there in the beginning. We have this in the Hebrew first verse of Genesis, and we also have this in Proverbs chapter 4 and also Proverbs, especially Proverbs chapter 8. We went into that in more detail in the Divine Feminine video. Very, very important video. A lot of people are going to eat off of that and you're going to hear them upgrade their teaching once they get to understand it. That is a good thing. They might not give credit, but so be it. Right? Yahuwah Eloheinu, he knows. Right? Jah knows. So here, here, here. Let's now get to the next quick point right here. Who lied? Who lied? Who lied? So first we want to go right here, right? Just to get to this particular area of scripture right here, here, here. And then we're going to have to scroll. Let's scroll. Let's scroll forward right here. Let's go to verse uh, 15. And Yahuwah Elohim took. He took the man. Not they took the man. He took, we speak about the singularity. You heard us about singularity? It's about the singularity. Now, the singularity is like, it sounds like a modern thing, some like science fiction, and, and in scientific circles, they discuss singularity and, and, and like higher levels of science. But this was already the science of the Hebrew scriptures. Yahuwah Elohim took, he took the man and put him into the Gan Ba'aden, into the Gan, the Garden of Aden. And Aden, Eden means delight. To do what? To dress it and to keep it. Bringing out the word to dress it, right? To what? To serve, to work it, to labor in it, to work it. Abad, right? We have the Hebrew word Abad. Abad, right? To abad it and to shamar, to shamar or shomer, right? To, to hedge it about. Shomer, let's get into this right here to, to guard it. If you go down to the, to the Strong's, right? The Strong's right here, the Strong's definition, a primitive root. Now, Strong, in his concordance, he relied on the Gesenius, Gesenius lexicon that relied on the Ethiopic, the Gus, the Ethiopic, to clarify um, archaic Hebrew expression. So in order to get even the Strong's concordance, what a lot of the ones don't know, Right? but hopefully they get to know it for themselves, is that these scholars had to go to the Ethiopic, the Gutters, in order to find the, the proper pointing and the proper meaning 
for archaic Hebrew terms found in the Masoretic and the Hebrew scrolls that later on was translated into versions like the King James Version. But here we have the Shamar means promptly to hedge about as with thorns. So this idea to guard something, to protect something, means to hedge it about. As you have a garden, you put hedges about it about like some of the tender plants, the tender shoots to protect it from like the little foxes and other animals that may not have no malicious intent, but in their playing, it may destroy what you are growing, your tender, the tender crops, the tender plants that you're growing. So to guard something, right, or to keep it, when it says to keep it means to hedge it about. So what was the reason that Yahuwah Elohim, that he who be who he be, the power, put the man, Ha'adam, the Adam, right, into the Gan Ba'adin, was to work it, to work it, and to guard it, to keep it, to hedge it, in other words, to protect it, right? So now we're going to get into this verse here a little bit more. Our first point is first to establish what was said and to who it was said. Because these, maybe they haven't seen the video or maybe they just ignore it because we don't have a lot of subscribers right now and we don't have a lot of hits on our videos right now. So, you know, but broad is the way that lead to destruction, but narrow is the gate that lead to life. So I give thanks for the few, right, the chosen few that choose to listen, study, and check it out. And please continue to share and thank you for the contributions and support to this particular ministry. Let's go forward. Verse 16, and Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, boom, keyword commanded, commanded who? Commanded the man. Did Yahuwah Elohim command the woman? We don't have that here. Did Yahuwah Elohim command the serpent? We don't have that here either. Yahuwah Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, in other words, Jehovah Elohim, another way of saying it to the English speakers, he commanded the Adam the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now remember when it says that the serpent was most subtle, was most subtle right here. We're in Genesis chapter 3 right here. Now the Nahash was more subtle, was more subtle. What does subtle mean? Arum, Arum. He was shrewd. He was crafty. He was sly. He was slick. He was cunning. But this word usually arum, arum in the Hebrew is usually used in a bad sense, right? Because there's a good sense of, of, of being, you know, you can say subtle. There can be a good sense, but this Hebrew word here. So just because we find a word translated the same way in English doesn't mean it's the same word that they translate from the, from the Hebrew. Sometimes the translators had to make a decision to the audience they was translating to. But now we... Right, as self professed Hebrews and Israelites must do due diligence to study to show ourselves approved. Check, check. All right, so Arun. So he was more subtle than any what? What was he? He was a beast, the beast, right? Here has the word high. Really, in the Hebrews, be Chaya, right? The Chayat. He, he was a beast, right? But the beast, the term beast means like a living creature, right? A living creature of the field. That Yahuwah Elohim, that he who be who he be, the power had made. And he said to who? The woman. He said to who? He said to the Isha. He said to the Isha. You see Isha right there? Isha. He said to the Isha, the woman, the wife, the female, the woman opposite of the man. Uh-oh, uh-oh, go back. Uh, no, over there. Go right there again. He said to who? The woman. You see what it says? Woman opposite of the man. Now you see this right here? He said, who said? He said, the serpent said, Keeping the context of the long sentence, so one has to, you know, read with comprehension. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field that Jehovah Elohim had made. And he, who? The serpent said to the woman, the woman is opposite of the man. Mm. Question. Why didn't he speak to the man? Because remember, we know that the man was the one who was in the command or who was commanded. We know this in the previous chapter. Notice how they will go to, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. What about chapter 2? Chapter 2. Chapter 2 sets the context. It's like we were watching a series on TV. And here we're at the, the 11th, the 10th, 11th episode. 
and somebody just comes in. We've been watching from the very first episode. They come in on the 11th, the 10th episode, and they start talking, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But we're like, well, hold up for a moment. Slow up for a moment. You need to go and watch it from the beginning and catch up, right? So when one just zoom in here, what they leave out is the previous chapter, right? And this leads us to question, uh, are, are they lying? But here, the man was commanded, Jehovah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. According to the translation, thou mayest. But now notice what the slick woolly Nahash, what the serpent said. The serpent said to who? He said it's the opposite of the man. He said it to the woman. Yay! He said, he said, yay! <laughs> he said, yay! Yay what? Yay what? Like somebody come up to you and say, yes. Yes what? Yes? Was there any other conversation going on? There was no other... See, that's how subtle he was. That's how subtle he was. He said, hath Elohim. Note here, as we also noted in the, in the, in the video that we responded to, the Nepal Shada and Sarnetta and them talking about that Elohim lied and everything, that previous video. Note right here that here it says Jehovah Elohim, Yahweh Elohim right had made right and then the serpent now slick woolly that, that that he be because it's also you're gonna find that there's the same serpent argument that is saying and trying to make you believe that the elohim alahayim hailahim lied and not that it was the serpent who lied and the woman who lied the serpent and before we even get to the point about about in the day that you eat of it, you would die because we heard Sarnetta, he made a big you know, point about that because if you read it from the English, it sounds like that. Yeah, agree. From the English, it does, it does, does sound just like that. But that's not what the Hebrew says. That's not what the Hebrew says. And we already went through that in the previous video. So also note on the record that these guys are still spouting the wrong myths and disinformation based on their... English mainly English only mentality and even if we go through a blue letter word by word that's one way of understanding what the word is translated as and has been translated as but you need to know the flow the flow of the words and as this word is used in this sense and translated like this well how come this word over here the same word is used over here and translated like that that's called study that's called study. That's called doing due diligence, right? But we can see what happens when you don't do due diligence. It's what happened to the Ish and the Isha, to the man and the woman, to Adam and to Hawa, right here, here, here. So now the serpent says to the woman, opposite of the man, Yea, hath Elohim said, Ye, y'all, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, Let's just go to this chapter. I want to bring it up so you can see it for yourself. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. And Yahuwah Elohim, this is Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And Jehovah Elohim commanded the who? The man. He commanded the Adam. Not Hawa, not Eve, not the Isha. But he commanded who? The man saying, of every tree of the garden thou. You said the word thou there? That word thou, when we bring it out in the Hebrew, that word thou is you male singular not ye ye means y'all so when the command was given in chapter two who was being spoken who was speaking and who was being spoken to who was commanded it was a man commanded but notice what, what he was commanded he was commanded right here of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat verse 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou thou means you it can mean you, male, you, female. In this context, it means you, male, singular. You, singular, male, shall not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, that's the translation. We already also went into, and we haven't heard other ones touch on this like this, because they only touch on the Hebrew, and may, may have a poor understanding of the Hebrew. They may be able to go to the blue letter word by word, but can't put the words together in any coherence. Right? Sequitur. A lot of their reasonings are non sequitur. It really doesn't follow. So some would say, well, he lied because it said in the day that thou eatest of it, you will surely die. No, it says that from the day, in the day that you eat of it, you will be dying the death. Death, you will be dying. 
It's like somebody with a terminal illness or disease and they've already been diagnosed as having this illness. And before there was no like, you know, they could live for however long. But now because now, now they have this disease, they've taken this, by eating of this, he's taking this disease into him. He now has a terminal condition and every day he is dying. That's what it's saying, that from this day, like in the day that, for in the day, in the day, the day you eat of it, you are now dying the death. It's just like what happens with many people with that diagnosed with some time, you know, some terminal cancer or illness and may job bless their souls, you know what I mean? But it's just like that. And somebody diagnosed and then after a little period of time, they're gone and you remember, yeah, they were, you know, from that day that the doctor told them that you only had a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever, you know, they were dying. And they eventually died. But before that they were healthy, well, everything. This is the context right here. When you're reading the Hebrew. But the point is here that who lied? Well, the serpent was clever. The serpent was subtle, very subtle, subtle, subtle. First of all, he spoke to the woman. The woman wasn't there. The woman, Eve, Hawa, she, the Ish, Isha, Isha wasn't there. Speaking the Hebrew, the Isha wasn't there. The woman wasn't there. She wasn't there. Right? Now, the thing about this narrative here in Genesis chapter 3, we get to find that when Hawa or the Isha, when she did finally take of the tree and that she did eat, she gave her husband with her. <laughs> she gave to Adam. So that means that Adam was there. So this, see how subtle this is? The serpent, he starts a conversation. He sparks a conversation with the woman. Right? And he's talking to the woman. And as we go on in the narrative, we get to find out that the Adam, he was there. And now, what does he say? Yay. The first word out of his mouth was yay. Yay what? Yay. Now, this is the word af. Af is like also yay. It's like, an, like, like kind of an affirmative particle. Affirmative particle. You know, like, like you know, like to say, like, like, like somebody, some people, somebody started conversation. So, 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 uh, yeah, 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 such and such and such, yeah. Let me ask you a question, but they start out like that. So, th but that's also could be seen to his sub subtlety, right? He says, "Yea, hath Elohim." No, he didn't say hath Yahuwah Elohim. So that's one point. So what we're gonna do right now is like they do in court, right? And we're holding court right here, like in court where somebody has been accused of a crime, right? Or right now, Elohim has been falsely accused. The Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, Eloheinu has been falsely accused of lying to Adam, right? To Adam, <laughs> right? Because really we don't have him speaking anything to Eve until after she admitted that she was beguiled. Like when he asked her, he asked her, what has she done? And she said she was beguiled. She at least admitted that she was tricked out. She was tricked, right? But she only recognized she was tricked before. So how does that figure in the argument that... Elohim lied. Why would she say she was tricked? Why didn't she say to Elohim, you're a liar? See, see, you, you see how faulty their argument is, right? But ain't nothing new under the sun. Others argued the same faulty argument before, but let's deal with it right now. So he says, yea, hath Elohim said? The response should have been by Hawa is like, um, you need to speak to my husband, but first of all, you need to be put respect on the Elohim. He needed to put respect. Yahweh Elohim commanded my husband. Husband, speak. That's how it probably should have gone, right? If we were living in an ideal world, if we were living in a perfect or a more perfect world, that's how it should have gone, right? But notice his question. He said, ye. Ye. No, no, no. It wasn't ye. It was he. It wasn't ye. It wasn't me. It was he. He. Hey, Adam. Speak to the snake, speak to the serpent, right? But notice this question. Ye, y'all, both of y'all, while directing it to her. So what he did is he kind of put the bottom rail on top. He flipped it around, right? He flipped, and the same thing that they're doing nowadays with the whole gender bending and the gender wars and all this kind of gender confusion. It's the same kind of thing that's going on, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's the same, ain't nothing new under the sun. You heard that before, right? Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Hold up for a moment. In Genesis chapter 2, 
verse 16, it says that Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. But notice the question. Are you really getting this question here? Y'all can't eat. Y'all are forbidden to eat. Y'all can't eat of any tree. So what is implied here is that this, this Elohim that Nahash is talking about wants to starve y'all. Y'all starving. Y'all hungry, right? Y'all can't eat of anything of the garden. Y'all can't eat of every tree. Of every tree. That means like of all tree. If we read it in the Hebrew, it becomes even more clear. Of all trees of the garden. Mm. Now, what was the woman's response? Well, first of all, snake, you got to put respect on the Elohim. And then you got to speak to my husband. You got to speak to Adam about this because Adam was commanded. I wasn't there. He was commanded. He can tell you exactly what the command is, but that didn't happen. Instead, the woman bit the bait. The woman bit the bait, right? Made her talk, got her talking, right? And the woman said to the serpent, we, uh-oh, we. Uh, need we go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16? And the Lord God and Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man saying, commanded who? The man saying, and all the thou's, the thou's, thou means you, either male or female. In this context, thou, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, is referring directly to the man. Not to ye, y'all, not to we, not to us, but to he. Not ye, but he. But the woman, she goes on and she says to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of of the tree which is in the midst of the garden which is in the midst of the garden now, now, now let me just go over here and see if see if we we caught her in another um no the tree that's in the midst she lied again that's another count so 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 let's count this the serpent's count right here let's go to the serpent's count the serpent count right here he he didn't put no respect on the elohim Right? Even the verse says that Yahuwah Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, he just says Elohim. No respect. He says, he says, ye, y'all, right? It was he, not ye, y'all. Then he tries to imply that the Elohim, right, as he is disrespectfully referring to, not Yahuwah Elohim, he's trying to say right here that um, the Elohim want to starve them. He, he, that's how subtle he is. He's putting in her mind hunger. He's putting in her mind lack. Right? Y'all should not eat of every tree. You can't eat of anything of the garden. And then she thinks, she feels she's correcting him. And then she, she bites the bait, responds, we. This, that's the first count on her. The first count on her, it was not we. It was he. It was not we. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 clearly states that it was he. Not, not we, but he. Right? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now, now she says in verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Let's pause right there. Now, why am I saying this is another count? Right? Okay, show Tarim. Show scribes and, and, and shoftim and judges amongst I and I. Take note, take note of this, right? Shotas, the shotas are the scribes, like, were, were the ones who kind of write up, you know, write it up and the judge the one who weighs it, right? But here, 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 first things first, in the midst of the garden. What tree was in the midst of the garden? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, right? See, this is the type of due diligence, you know, one don't play those games, those Bible games. But no, let's go through due diligence. Right? And out of the ground made Yahuwah Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. <laughs> now, I want you to remember that right there. Because the serpent and the woman, when it talks about it, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that was pleasant to the eye. Remember, 
Genesis chapter 2, she wasn't there. Chapter 2, verse 9, she wasn't there. She witnessed these things when she came into the garden. You know what I'm saying? When she, when she was born, you could say, from the man, right? But she wasn't really around for that, but she's just regurgitating. Think about it for a moment. She says right here in Genesis chapter 3, right? It says right here, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, right, and pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. All this is, is basically in the woman's eyes. Remember the same woman that a couple of verses later on would say that the serpent beguiled me, the serpent tricked me, and I did eat. The, the serpent deceived me and I did eat. If the Elohim lied, why didn't she say, oh, you lied to us, we ain't gonna die. No, no, she, 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 she done knew. So when even Sadnet and others say, oh, they became wise, really? You really think they became wise because they recognized that they were naked? They were ashamed? No, they were ashamed. They were ashamed. Don't you remember at the end of chapter 2? It says that they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I mean, if you are naked, man, with your woman, or woman with your man, you're naked and, you know, what's the problem? Why you got this? Where does the shame come from? Guiltiness. Rest on them conscience, oh yeah, right? Out of the ground may Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Notice this, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Boom! So it was not, see, she, she, she's convoluted. There's a convolution of, of, of things that's being said. And we still put the more of the blame the, 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 the burden of the blame on the man. Why do we put the burden of blame on the man? Well, that's why Christ is the last Adam, right? To replace the faulty. We mind them. We, we, we fell down from Adam. We fell down on our responsibility, right? She's talking a whole bunch of yay yay. She's talking all over the place, right? And he's right there and he's not correcting her. Right here it says the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Based on the context here, it's saying that the tree of life is in the midst of the huh, garden and there's a, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, some would argue about, well, but the scripture is basically saying tree of life connected with the midst, the midst of the garden, right? She says, she says over here in chapter three, right? She says, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Elohim has said now <laughs> did Elohim say anything to her H how did she know this H how did she know this? she wasn't there she's speaking on something that she was not told and the one that was told it didn't say nothing he's there and she's talking and what she's saying when we compare it with the record is incorrect wouldn't you call that a lie or error or something a beguilement, a beguilement. How about beguilement? Let's use the King James word that she, she says, the serpent beguiled me. This is part of her beguilement, her beguilement. And now she goes along, it says one fool make many. So the serpent says Elohim, he didn't say Yahuwah Elohim, Elohim have said. This is why we had asked the question since Adam is, is Ben Elohim. Adam is son of God, is son of Elohim, according to the scripts. It's in the scripture, right? We, we touched on it in the previous vid. What's she talking? He's so subtle, the serpent so subtle, we think, or one might think that he's talking about Yahweh Elohim, but he might be talking about the man. His target was the man. His target was Adam. His target was the man. And he's using the woman. And the woman doesn't recognize that she's being used, that she's being tricked. It's like what's going on nowadays. With all this kind of the gender wars and 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 you know men versus women i'm saying especially among we people black and brown beta israel people house of israel hebrew people black people right because the european people and their gender stuff they got a whole different history of confusion around these things when we look in our so-called black and african and hebrew and Israelite cultures it's 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 different I'm not saying it's perfect everywhere, but it's much different than what the white folks have and other nations. Well, I'll say white people have because some of the other nations are kind of similar. You know, like the Afro-Asiatic nations, we have similar mores, 
right? You know, similar more rights. The Europeans, they, the white man and, and woman, that's a whole different thing there. But anyway, let's go on. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. See, see, see how it's very vague? You see the vagueness right there? We just showed you the verse. We showed you the verse where it says, um, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, comma, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the first tree that's mentioned in the midst of the garden is the tree of life. Then there's an and, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Remember, man created, right? Let's create, let's make man uh, in our image after our likeness. Very good. They were, this is the fall from very good to this duality, to this duality. Sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes good, sometimes bad, ups and down, mixed up moods and added to. This is how all this stuff that we experience and, and struggle to overcome, you know, this is this is where according to the scripture it begins from right she goes on and said that Elohim Hilahim Elohim have said ye y'all shall not eat of it that's a lie he said thou see some of, some of us in the English if you're an English speaker this point that we keep emphasizing might not really seem like a, a, a big point because of the the English has already ruined your, your, your mentality, this English only kind of thing. Because there's not that, some other speakers, even in some of the other European and Romance languages, they even have a distinction, right, in these things. It, but it's here in English too, but we're not, people are not probably used to it. Ye means y'all, you all, right, shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Here's how, here's how, here's how subtle the serpent was. Let me, let me just continue right here of how subtle the serpent was. The serpent, right, the serpent was so subtle, right, the serpent was so subtle that the serpent knew that Yahuwah Elohim had commanded the man. He knew that the command was thou, speaking to he, not ye. He, he knew that. He knew that it was Yahuwah Elohim and not Elohim. He also knew that Adam was Ben Elohim, that Adam was a son of Elohim. He knew that. This is why he directed it to the woman, the opposite of the man. While the man was the one who was directly commanded. Now to the fault or the shortcoming, or we could say the sin of man, like when the Bible talk about how man fell and man did this, that Christ now, he is the one to undo what man did. He's the last Adam. It's because of the events that occurred right here. It's because of these events right here that we get to read about this in the gospel. That's a reverse for the curse right here, right? The serpent in the garden offering the fruit, right? Offering the fruit, right? The serpent in the garden, offering the, you know, walking, you know, walking, right? You can even see right here. So we know that this idea of a serpent walking or talking was something that other ancient peoples had narratives and stories about. In fact, all of the ancient stories come from the true story. All of the ancient stories, especially about the origins concerning humanity. This is what the scriptures, the Hebrew Bible, is very good in kind of putting into its general, you know, this general context right here. So, here, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Notice that right there, touch it, least ye die. There's another lie. There's another lie. Nothing was mentioned about touching it. How are you going to... To, to, to dress a garden and, and keep a garden if you can't touch anything in the garden. I mean, how are you going to work a, you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to work in this garden and take care of it if you can't touch anything? Somebody told you, don't, don't eat of it. That's all. Just, you can eat of other trees, but don't eat of this tree. That's all. But notice how this, the Nahash, the serpent, was like, did Elohim say you can't eat of anything? Eat of, eat of every tree, of all the trees? Because every means all. All the trees? Now when Hawa 
or the Isha, the woman, responds, she continues in the in the Nahash, the serpent's um, lack of respect on Elohim by going along with Elohim instead of saying Yahweh Elohim. But hey, she wasn't there when the command from Yahweh Elohim came forward. Right? And remember, while all this is happening, the man is there. He is there. Don't believe I've heard some 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 other ones and ones try to go through this and say, well, the man, he wasn't there. Like like she was speaking to the serpent, like behind Adam's back, and Adam wasn't there. Rah, 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 rah. That's all rah. That's all that's all evil, rah. Right? That's all that's all wrong. He was right there. Because as we read on, when she looked at the tree and everything that went through her eyes, it, it, it looked bling bling, a shine eye girl is a trouble to a man, right? But anyway, when she saw it bling bling and, that, you know, I looked good to her. It looked good, right? When she saw that look good to her, she took, she ate of it. And she didn't drop down dead, right? And so she gave to the man who was there with her, right? So we can see right here that she added to the command and she changed the context of the command it's like christians a lot of the christians do this all the time <laughs> you know what i mean like, like they would take verses in the bible that was written to the children of israel and they'll make it seem like it was written to everybody in the world it says speak to the children of israel specifically there were other children of other nations speak to this these children here and they'll make it seem like this was written to everybody. It's the same thing that happened here. Show you how serpent, how the serpent was subtle, right? Subtle, tricky, clever, slick, right? Ye shall not eat of it. And see how how he was so slick. He appealed to the woman's emotions. He appealed to the woman's emotions. Mm -hmm. And then later on, got the man's emotions too. Instead of the logical thought began, you know, to, to fade away. They fell, right? Adam was falling right here, free falling. Because while all this is going on, he is listening to this conversation and he didn't step up one time and said, no, 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 no. It, that, that's not how it happened. Serpent, snake, no. Yahuwah Elohim commanded me, saying of every tree of the garden, I may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I shall not eat of it. For in the day that I eat of it, I will be dying the death. That's the Hebrew way. That's the that's Hebrew way. Right? She says, less, right? Less, less ye die. Notice, less ye die. Right? When we get into the die the death, dying the death, there's two words used. Death is used twofold way because in the Hebrew it brings out the sense of in the day that you eat of it, it's like you would have gotten contracted a disease that will be killing you softly, killing you slowly. From that day, that day would be the day in the sense that you have begun to die. That's what the Hebrew says. So when they say, oh, well, well when they ate of it, they didn't drop down dead. They became wise. Wise in what way? Wise in what way? Oh, because they knew they were naked? It wasn't about no wisdom. It was shame. Some people take shame for wisdom. Can you, can you imagine that? They, they think that shame, guiltiness on your conscience is wisdom. Mm. And then the Nahash said in verse 4, he said to the woman, Ye y'all, y'all shall not surely die. See, in a sense here, because he's so subtle, he knew the command was to the man. So therefore, he could say that. To her, he's saying basically to her that she won't die <laughs> because she was not commanded this. So he's trying to say like there's a loophole for you, but he's saying it as the ye because you already got them into you already got her into the ye thing. You will not surely die. Notice the word surely is the same H forty one ninety one as die because that is like die die, but in the Hebrew you will not. You know, die the y'all will not die the death. Like like but he's playing with things. He already had play with them with taking respect off of the name of Elohim. Instead of saying Yahuwah, Jehovah, Elohim, he just said Elohim. When he said ye, right? You know, when he said y'all can eat of any of the trees, 
He didn't even come and say, oh, why can't you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be just like God. He could just came direct. No, he came like a snake. <laughs> he came like a serpent, like a snake, round about. If you ever watch a snake, snakes sometimes move sideways. If you watch like snakes like in the desert, snakes, like, they have this way of moving sideways. What we're going to do is, is cut it off. I right, ain't gonna cut them off. Now, now this is like the fallen serpent right here. This was the walking serpent. Notice the difference. This is the walking serpent here. This is the serpent now crawling on his belly. This is the serpent crawling on his belly. And the cat there symbolizes the lion of Judah. Right? The lion of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Right there. Cutting, cut it, cut, 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 cut. Right? Cutting off, right? Cutting off the neck. Right? Cutting them off at the neck. Right? And hopefully we'll cut this false philosophy off at the neck. At least ones will be able to have the evidence for themselves and look over it. Because we'll challenge any to dispute what the scripture is really saying right here. We're not, we're not giving our opinion about what we're saying, look, he says, ye y'all shall not surely die. Ye y'all. But then the command was given to he. He is there. He, now he goes on to say, for Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. What, what the serpent is really speaking to, he's speaking to the woman in the sense of, you know how some woman will say, I'm every woman. You know how women have that, there's that, there's that tune, I'm every woman. He is speaking to humanity right there. He's saying that Elohim, really he's flipping it, that the man, your man, a son of Elohim, a son of Yahweh Elohim, but he doesn't say Yahweh, Jehovah Elohim, he just says Elohim. Because the Elohim, therefore, can also refer to the man. Man created in the image after the likeness of God. And also Adam being called the Ben Elohim, the son of Elohim. He, she, he's, saying, he's saying to the woman that your man knows, right, that in the day that you eat of it, you're going to have equality with your man in the sense of you're going to be the God. This is where the goddess worship begins. In humanity, this is pointing to here in Moshe's Moses' first book is pointing to where the goddess worship began. And remember who told you this, and we're, we're going to break it down and bring it forward, John willing, and explain it, right? But when we start to study this, we say, "Oh, look what he says." For Elohim doth know in the day that ye y'all eat of it, then your eyes shall be open. So the Nahash, the serpent, is talking to more than one. But notice who is speaking to him is one. Get that? The serpent is talking to ye, y'all. That means two or more. But only one is responding. And the one that's responding is not even the one who received the original command in the previous chapter. For Elohim doth know that in the day that y'all eat of it, then your eyes shall be open. See, here's the question. Yes, the eyes will be open. Right? But open to what? open to a, a, another level of reality, a cursed level of reality that it was not open to before. A cursed level of reality, a bad level of reality. Remember, up to this point, they were still under that very good, that very good that we find in what? We find in Genesis chapter 1. They were still under very good. Once they eat, once they they, you know, once this virus, it's like a virus got into their system, okay, then your eyes shall be open. He said, like, see, your eyes will be open. You ever see some things that you wish you did not see? You ever seen some things, uh, brothers, sisters, and others, have you ever seen some things? And after you say, oh, God, you're like, oh, man, why did I see this? And it's almost like once you see it, it's hard for you to unsee it. Mm. Would you call that wisdom? Is that wisdom? Is, is that is that wisdom? It would have been wiser not to see it. You heard that those things were going on, but now you actually seen it. You actually seen it. Mm, 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 mm. Of course, there's a curiosity to see. Yeah? Like we all would like to see. Right? We all would like to see things. But haven't we ever seen some things that we would want to, we would like to not see it? You like to unsee it, but we can't unsee it. Are there things that people have seen that they suppress in their minds? That they, that they don't want to they, they don't want to bring it up, right? It's very disturbing when they when they re-see it. They've seen it once and they, they would have liked not to have seen it. They may have wanted to see it, right? And once they saw it, 
they, 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 they pray to God that they could un if they could get a lobotomy on that one thing they seen, just just take that out. I, I, you know what I mean? Those those horrible things. Those horrible things that your eyes be open up to. Right? And ye and y'all shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. There's something right here that we like to get into this particular verse right here. Let's see if we can get into this verse right here for a moment. We're going over the hour mark right here. Right? Um, and this is a, a Shabbat Eve uh, uh, podcast or, or, or video. We're recording this right here. Just something we want to see right here. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And you, you will be as... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ve, he, yitem. We, he, yitem. We, he, yitem. Ke, lohim. Yo, day. Tob wara, tob wara, right? So yeah, right here. Um, okay, we're just looking at the Hebrew right here. For Elohim knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, right? Your eyes will be open, and ye shall be now. See, see, God's right there. God's right there in the Hebrew. It's the Elohim. Right, it's the Elohim, right? But it can be translated as y'all shall be like Elohim. Remember, Adam already was created according to the scripture in his image and after his likeness. So he's already as the Ha Elohim, Ha Alahayan, Chaylehim. He's already as, right? But then it says, knowing good. And evil. See, this word knowing is a very interesting word. Yada'a. Yada'a. When you know something in the Hebrew sense, you're also responsible for that. They were brought into a sheltered condition. The garden was a sheltered. The, the, the term Garden of Eden, the Gan Ba'aden, the Gan Ba'aden in the Hebrew, the, the, the Hebrew implication of the Gan Ba'aden. Is a garden of delights. It's like a garden of all good. Like you're, you're, in, you're in a very good situation. You, you know, you know, you, it ever happened? You're in some situation, or you've been experienced a situation where it was very good, right? And then it starts to become, you know, sometimes happy, sometimes sad, sometimes good, sometimes bad. You know, it becomes, it becomes, it, it changed. The situation changed, right? That right there was what sold the woman. Note this. That sold the woman. Remember the woman right here. And this is why I say that after this is where the so-called, where a, a, once a balance, more of a balance, right, with the man and the woman, the man had a, had, had a responsibility here. Otherwise, we see that they're in a very much an equal situation. The man had one responsibility, and that was to maintain one command. One command. All right? But by the serpent saying to the woman that ye shall be as Elohim, he is saying that you, she, will be like he. And hasn't this been the same thing that's been going on for a thousand, thousands of years, especially more recently? All right? With all the feminism and schism and everything. All right, you know what I'm saying? Even today, where they say, "Well, women have equal rights." Okay, if that's what's legislated, that's what's that's the laws that govern this so-called world system or society right now. But it doesn't really always work out like that. In situations where a woman, it, it's still like almost like people still try to give women a bligh, even when women are supposed to have equal rights. They say, "Well, it's a woman," but no, if you have equal rights, like if, for example, if we have equal rights. And one time it said the man was the breadwinner, right? The man was the one who, who went out there and supported and did all this according to what we've been made to believe, right? So in that sense, why do women complain about paying bills? I mean, think about it for a moment. If you're equal, then you can also, but I'm a woman. No, 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 we're equal. We are equal. If we're equal, then we're equal. If we're equal, that means you can pay half. Half can come out your salary too. 
That means that when I got to lift something, when well, a man is stronger than a woman, oh, see, that's inequality now to say that a man is stronger than a woman. You see the confusion? It all started, it all in a sense emanated. It all emanated from here, right? And when the woman saw, not notice, everything is from the woman's perspective here. And y'all can't recognize that the goddess, the goddess worship in humanity began here. What Moshe, Moses, Moshe is showing us, this is where it began. This is the, one can say the allegory, this is the typology, this is the type right here. If you understand this well, then whatever else has gone on in history, even down to this present time, is clear from right here. And when the woman, the Isha saw, when she saw, no, it, it doesn't say that when they saw, it doesn't say when they saw, but when she saw that the tree was good for food. But no, if we go to the previous chapter, chapter 2, verse 9, right, to grow every tree that is pleasant, every tree that is pleasant and good for food. So there were a lot of trees that were pleasant and good for food too. There were all these other trees that were pleasant and good for food too. What's the big deal? about this one thing? The big deal was the Nahash. The big deal was the Nahash was going to get Adam and the Nahash got Adam by a roundabout way using the woman. That's why the woman said, I was beguiled. The serpent beguiled me. He tricked me. Afterwards, she recognized. Now, if you want to say that's some wisdom, well, there was the wisdom that she recognized, the lower wisdom that she was tricked out. Right? It was pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. I mean, of course, women like nice things, things that look nice, right? So you understand how he sold her on this. It's like a woman going shopping and <laughs> one of these fashion serpents selling them on something. And then they recognize, I paid all this money and this is a piece of shite. Man. Oh, mm. And a tree to be desired. All this is subjective. All this is subjective in the woman's point of view. The key word is saw. She saw. Right? Now, now, sisters, mothers, daughters, wives, how many times have you experienced something like this? Something seems a certain way. It looks like that. The one who will try to sell you on it has sold you on it. Then afterwards, you're just like um, Hawa, where she said, I, I was beguiled and I did eat. Right? That's why it was told to the woman that the man, right? That's why the headship of the man was told to woman and to the woman he said, right? After he talked about the sorrow and conception, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Uh oh. A tree to be desired to make one wise. Thy desire shall be to thy husband. A tree desired to make one wise. I see. What do you see? Remember when Yeshua Adonino Robeno had healed that blind one? He, he asked, what do you see? I see men walking like trees. A tree to be desired to make one wise. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. That's what Jehovah told her. Jehovah Elohim said, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee, or more correctly, a little better, he shall overrule thee. In other words, it was the man's responsibility to overrule this shite that was going on. But no, no, that didn't happen. That's why Moshiach, Yeshua, is the last Adam. Mm. She took of the fruit thereof. She took. Not they took. Oh, it's equality. Equality means they, they should have taken together. They should have taken together. No, she saw. She decided. She took. And he's just there. I can understand why some women say, like, you know, they want a man to protect them, do such and such. You know, like, that seems to be a big refrain, you know, throughout time and in certain cultures, even nowadays, where a woman kind of seeks a man to, to be there because there's almost like a systemic anomaly that goes back to, to, to this very principle here. She saw she, how it looked to her. She made her decision, right? She took all the fruit thereof. And did eat. Right? She didn't take of the fruit and broke it in half and say, you have half and I have half. Let's eat this together. No. She took of the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also to her husband with her. Uh-oh. And he did eat. 
and the eyes of them both were opened. Were open to what? It was open to the fact that they fucked up, that they ucked up. It was open to the fact that they messed up. That's what they got to see. And I see some people like to go into this and say, oh, their eyes were open and they got all this wisdom. And they are adding to the scripture. The eyes of both of them were open, yeah. And they knew that they were naked. So are you telling me that in chapter 2, verse 25, when it says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed? See, you have to connect this verse here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, with what we have in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So man, in a sense, by his failure to act, lost his headship. And the woman, by being beguiled by the serpent, and all this happening right there in front of everybody, right? At least these three ones right there, you can see that the the bad feelings. You know, the, this thing between men and women. You can understand why it's like a woman wants to find a man that she can trust, that's gonna, not going to lie to her, that's going to be there, that's going to protect her if she's making a wrong decision. It's not going to just sit around and watch the decision go down, and then later on, it's all your fault. <laughs> so they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. That's the key. This is the key part of it. That's why when it says that you have to compare scripture with scripture, Right? When it says, we're not ashamed. If we go now to Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. That's, that's the thing they knew. There's great knowledge of becoming like gods, right? Becoming like Elohim, like gods. So the example of it, for those who say that the Elohim lied, and it was actually the serpent that was telling the truth, this is the great truth they got to know. They got to know shame. They got to know shame and pain. Oh, what a game. They, they fell from a very good condition where there was no hurtful, harmful thing. But they reached out their hand to iniquity. All right? Well, the woman was beguiled. We have to give that to her. She was beguiled. She was in transgression. She was tricked. But the man was in the sin. That's why it says that in the scripture, that the woman was in transgression, not the man. The man knew better. The man knew better. To whom more is given, more is required. And they knew that they were naked, and they sued fig leaves. Fig leaves. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You've all this knowledge, they couldn't make themselves some real, some real clothing? Don't, don't the gods know about real clothing? We see where Yahuwah Elohim makes them garments. They, they get garments of skin, maybe leather, some leather garments, some garments of skin they get later on. Where's this great knowledge? Where's this great wisdom? Where's this great being like God and everything? So, so God is ashamed? God has shame? No, no, no. It was a trick. Eve said it. The woman said it right there in Genesis chapter 3 at verse 13. Yahuwah Elohim said to the woman, what is this that thou has done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. In fact, her response right there was much better than Adam. It was much better than Adam. Adam is shucking and jiving. He's like, well, the woman you gave to be with me, she gave me and I did eat. Like, like you know, Yahuwah Elohim could have said, I'm just saying, just, just speaking as a man. He could have said, you know, to the man, nigga. I commanded you. It was just me and you. You know, like like you and somebody make an agreement and then, then, then you introduce them to somebody or, you know what I mean, you hook them up and they forget all about the fact that before you even had this woman or this wife, we already had this work in agreement. Now you want to blame me because I told you, I commanded you not to do this and you listened to the woman, the servant was talking, you didn't say nothing. And now it's my fault? It's my fault. And so they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, aprons, aprons. They made themselves aprons. They made themselves a belt. Here's what it says, apron. The, the, the Hebrew word is chagor, 
Chagor. They made themselves Chagora, Chagora. They made themselves aprons, loincloth, a loincloth, a belt, a loincloth. Right? In other words, they made themselves something to cover their, their private parts. They became ashamed of their, what, sexuality? They were not ashamed of their sexuality before, when they were very good, when they were in a place of delight, not a place of heart, right? Everything was good. They, they, they was laying around naked. You know, man and his wife, they were not, that's the key word in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. And they were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. <laughs> they were loving it, you know. But now, after they ate, this is this is the first of their opening their eyes to all the bad, all the hurtful, all the evil that was opposite of the very good condition that they, in other words, by, in a sense, people say, what was the fruit, right? People have explained it different ways. Let's just take it like if, if it was a fruit, whatever it was. Some people say it was fig leaves, figs, right? Whatever. Whatever fruit it was, th that's not the point. Is by that disobedient act, they created an alternative reality. They opened the door to alternative reality. You know what I mean? It's like somebody is in a garden. Right now, I kick them out and push them out into the desert. Their eyes are gonna be open to something because you know they had the trees for shade and everything, and you know, cool breeze. Now they're in a very difficult condition. Their eyes are open now. Oh, they're seeing stuff they never saw before. Right, and then we have to even see this stuff. Why do they have to see all the bad, the evil, the hurtful stuff to begin with? That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Because some are trying to say that there was something bad in the garden and the serpent was just helping them out. And then for those who say the serpent was Christ, you know, me, 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 you need to repent. You, you, need, you need to forget that. Christ was not the serpent. Christ was not the serpent. Revelation talk about he war against the serpent. Right? He war against the serpent. Right? <laughs> And uh, we could get into that reasonment right there. But but we just heard that on... But here, here, here look what the word is. Belt. It's a belt for the waist. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on for a moment. So the wisdom, the great wisdom that the serpent promised them. Now, some people say, well, furthermore, it says, for the Yahuwah Elohim said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life. Remember the tree of life was in the midst. That's what Eve said. That's what one of the counts of her being beguiled or lying, right? And eat and live forever. He would say, and see, see down here, let's go to verse 22. We'll pick up on this maybe a little bit more because the question is, well, who is, who is the us here? Has become as one of us. The us is explained in Proverbs chapter 8, that's one explanation of the us right there. Just in the Old Testament scripture. Proverbs chapter 8. Read the whole chapter. Read about wisdom. Read that wisdom was there before, you know, the heavens and earth. Wisdom was there. Right? So, Yahweh Elohim, right? Speaking to who? I say firstly and foremostly to wisdom. Wisdom is there in the beginning before you see any talk about angels. Before you finally talk about angels, wisdom was there. Wisdom was there in the beginning. Wisdom is mentioned. He created the heavens and earth in the Reishith. In Reishith. Chokmah. Wisdom is the Reishith. We explained that in the, the Divine Feminine from the beginning. Check out that particular vlog. We go into more detail right there. Some people say this was a bad thing. That man was cast out from the Gan Ba'ed in the Garden of Eden because, oh, oh, they would say Jehovah Elohim was jealous that he would become like a god or blah, 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 blah. That's all crazy. That's crazy talk. No, that was a mercy. Imagine that you're in a terminally ill and bad condition and you're going to be in that condition forever. Imagine you're poor and somebody says, well, you could be poor forever. Would you want to be poor forever? Would you want to be sick forever? Would you... Yes, brothers and sisters, right here, 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 right? So a little bit more on that right there. So who lied? Who lied? The 
serpent lied? Who lied? Eve lied. Who lied? You lie if you say that Yahuwah Elohim lied. <laughs> yes, I, Rastafari. 